let's look at um, this class. And hydrozoa are mainly going to spend most of their time in uh, polyp stage. So they're mainly polyps. And every once in a while, they will come out of uh, that polyp stage and go through a sexual life cycle um, in order to produce eggs and finally a uh, embryological stage that's called a planula and um, this actually just helps to increase their genetic diversity so they don't become too genetically narrow and uh, they can withstand some harsh changes in environment um, but they will spend most of their time as polyps uh, it's an important characteristic of this um, class hydrozoa um, even the jellyfish, when they do form, they're pretty reduced. They're not even that large. Um, but they do have uh, gonads, and so they're able to um, produce some offspring that have some swapped up genetics, which is always a good thing if you're trying to survive. And obviously this has been a good plan for them since they're pretty old creatures. Um, they exist in colonies, as in the case of a... Um, uh, Portuguese man of war. This is a Portuguese man of war and on here are all these colonies that actually hang down from this top structure. The top structure is called a pneumatophore. Pneumatophore. That means it's full of air and it's kind of an air carrier. Um, and so we have our Portuguese man of war. It's a colonial species. We also have our Hydra vulgaris. This is a really common species. They actually live in the state that I'm from, which is Kansas. Um, so this is our solitary species. And you can see right here it has uh, babies that are budding off of it and it's producing more of uh, its offspring just by budding off and um, so that's kind of a cool freshwater um, version of nidarians. Um, if you go out into lakes and ponds, if you flip over some um, leaves, sometimes you can actually find on the bottom of aquatic plants, you can find these creatures. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing to find. Uh, Let's take a look at Cyphozoa. This is a class that we are most used to. Um, we think of these as the true jellyfish. They have a really thick uh, mesoglia, which is why we often call them the true jellyfish. They get their name from a Greek word, skyphos, um, which means cup. So they have a cup-like shape. Um, for this class, the medusa are the dominant stage in their life cycle rather than polyps. And all of these um, cyphozoa go through a stacked jellyfish stage, which is called strobilation. Okay, um, let's take a look at what strobilation is. Uh, this is a picture of the life cycle of a typical uh, cyphozoa, and the Cyphozoa are going to uh, actually plant themselves in something called a planula, just like a larva. That'll settle and it begins to live kind of in a polyp stage for a while. Um, eventually, though, it will form this strobilia. Strobilia is the stacked jellyfish um, stage, that's what I call it. Um, and they eventually break off and um, swim free to form uh, adult, and that adult, again, will go forward and, and complete the life cycle here. So um, this is a characteristic of Cyphozoa that you should definitely know. The second to last one we're gonna look at is Anthozoa. These are the flower animals. Um, a example of those would be like a sea anemone, a coral or sea pen or sea fan. Um, this class does not have a medusa larval stage. 
in its development, unlike the rest of the entire phylum. Um, it includes 15 separate classes. Um, major classes, though, are going to be um, like the sea anemones and the corals. Those aren't the scientific names, but um, they're kind of the general idea there. Um, so if we look at those, some of these creatures are really, really, really neat. Um, Cubezoa, uh, these are the sea wasps. They're, the jellyfish are mostly small with uh, transparent swimming bells at the top. Um, if we were to cut one of these at a transverse section, so if I just take this and look at it through this little um, transverse section, they're essentially square. And each of these animals has four different tentacles. They're common in tropical and subtropical oceans. And their sting can be exceedingly painful and even uh, fatal to humans. Uh, sea fleckery is one of the most deadly of all animal species. That's what is often called the box jellyfish. So um, I hope that that is helpful as you're studying for um, or just enjoying uh, the world of Nidarians, and thank you for tuning in.